we have a fantastic battle. This has to be, to date, one of my favorite battles of this tournament game. I want to say the tournament, and that's technically true. I haven't really seen other games yet. But this is definitely one of the most amazing battles I've ever seen. If you look at this, you would immediately just say, okay, well, Penji is going to win. He's brought all these mages. He's brought all these crossbows. He's got all this. But on Olm's, oh, at Rootgard's side, you have a Watcher. <laughs> these things are really good. And Utgard's own Pretender God in probably one of the most interesting kits you've ever seen on a rainbow chassis with these gems, these crazy paths. And just because y this is a Pretender God, not just some skiddly human mage, you have to respect it. But let's watch what happens, because this is such a cool fight. Oh, uh, worth noting, these guys, these Yoden hurlers on the walls are no joke. Especially when units are just right here under them and they're landing all of these boulders and they have infinite ammo because they're on the wall. They are no joke. Never, You never want to get caught up with skeletons there at the gate. Alright, so we're going to take a moment. Let's pause it real quick because we are aware. Turn 6. So the full script of this guy is Fire Shield, Power of the Spheres, all these blood slaves getting cold. Rigor mortis. Oh, come on. Oh, at that point he gets attacked by the wolves. So this is where the first part of genius is. His first spell was fire shield because he knows Pan is going to cast Howl. And by taking fire shield, the wolves will often just get themselves killed. It's fantastic. Okay, come on. Where's the next spell? Oh, did that just end the script? Is he now stuck in melee combat? Oof, okay. Let's go see now what's going on on this side of the field. We have a communion. So six slaves, two masters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. And are they both Astral Earth? Okay, let's see. We have Anti-Magic, Soul Slay. Fair. Communion Master, Power of the Spheres, Astral Healing. I love Astral Healing, man. Astral Healing is really good for chip damage across your entire army. It doesn't look like much, but the effective value of it is enormous. Top of that, he has two pans. This guy, I'm assuming, cast Howl and is taking a, a long nap. And this guy's casting Legion of Steel or something. Mass Protection, good. Yeah. Most people would look at this and still say, yeah, Olms, or Utgard's got this. If or Pangea has got this. My bad. There you go. Now, the Frost Father himself, I'll try to scroll through all this crap, he cast Howl. And Howl can backfire in this kind of situation by pre preventing you from, I guess, getting to your enemy if you're depending on, yeah, there's Howl, on actually, like, hitting them. And I think, okay, is he casting Claim Life? He's casting Claim Life, so he's done. His script is over. So he's buffed himself to the nines. Not even to the nines. His protection is still super low. But he's got good defense skill because of cold power. He's got this massive chill aura, which these non-sacreds can't do anything about. He's got his fire shield to kill wolves. He's got luck uh, through his items. He's cast Howl. He's cast... Rigor Mortis. He's twice born, so even if this fails, he's going to survive. Unless he gets Soul Slayed, which is a possibility. And because his fatigue is so high due to Rigor Mortis, this man with a Skull Staff is casting Drain Life and Incinerate and whatever he wants, but he's making sure to always cast Drain Life. Because Drain Life is going to get one, give him hit points. Look at this. Look how close this got. It's going to give him hit points so you can survive this kind of crap. Even Oh, look, but he does have Undying. And then it's going to restore his fatigue. I don't know what's going on there. I guess he's got to run out of gems first. Yep, and there's Drain Life. And everyone is just taking a nap now because the Rigor Mortis is set in. You know, the wolves are going to come in. And that means that when the units do wake up, they're going to try to hit the wolves. The wolves are going to get soul slayed. 
you know, some skeletons. Like, this is fantastic. This is so well done by, uh, I think, the player's uh, Koinyak McAlpin or something like that. Uh, very cool dude. I had a pleasure fighting him. But yeah, this battle, I'm so glad I got to see it. It's just such a good play with your generic human pretender god. Just that use of drain life to offset rigor mortis, to keep yourself alive, to have luck, to have undying. I don't know. I'm fanboying over this fight, but I thought that it, it, it's pretty damn good. And that's it. And then because it's a rigor mortis, it's a fatigue play, it's just going to wipe out the entire army. Just, they're gone. There's no chance of retreat. They're all sleeping. Yeah, eventually, the Utgard army starts routing. Oh, there's one important thing I didn't mention, is that uh, pretenders... There's some something with pretenders routing in forts or something like that. And that's probably what took so long for this guy to run. But yeah, that's it. Uh, the ultimate result is, yeah, everyone died, including the Frostfather due to, you know, turn timer and retreats and all that. But everyone died. The entire Pangean army died to nothing, really. It's like these guys are 50 gold each. <laughs> he lost 50 of them. These guys are 12 gold each. He lost 100 and something. He lost all of these mages to a single pretender god casting some angry spells. This was wonderful.